Um, what is your connection to Native American culture? Okay, well, um, I grew up on the Indian Reservation in Montana. Um, my father is Lakota, which commonly people refer to that tribe as Sioux, um, and his family is from South Dakota. Um, my stepfather is Blackfeet, so we grew up on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation. Um, so I guess my connection is through my family. Is that kind of what you meant by the question? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever researched your culture? If so, why or why not? Yeah, I, so when I went to college, I was a Native American studies major along with environmental science. And um, I researched a lot of different Native cultures, including my own. Um, and the purpose of the, of the major is to understand indigenous ways of knowing. So the way that Native people look at the world and work through the things that, um, you know, like, for example, like, how do we think of medicine? Or how do we run our governments? Um, how do we think of child raising? So that's what I studied in college. Okay. So how do you express your... Oh, wait, wait. Have, wait, yeah? Okay. Have, how do you express your culture's beliefs and values? Can you rephrase that? What do you mean by express? Like, did My, you attend powwows or celebrations? Oh, yeah. Okay, great. I think we should close that. Can you close that door? Thanks, man. Just because otherwise it's going to pick up yeah. on the interview. Yeah. Okay, so, um, so my family, we um, do what's called sweat lodge. And that's kind of like, I would say it's kind of like a type of church in that we go there to practice um, spirituality. Um, we also, we bead a lot of things. So, um, oh, okay. And when, when we, like when you graduate from high school and then from college, you have a ceremony. So I, when I graduated from high school, myself and other students that were Native, we received these um, blankets that are called Pendleton blankets, and they're really, like, decorative. Mm -hmm. And then we get eagle feathers that are beaded. So I still have mine. And then when you graduate from college, you receive another eagle feather. And then also um, I received a pair of moccasins to kind of symbolize, like, my journey into the world. Um, also my family, um, has 14 horses and we, um, horsemanship is really important to our tribe. Um, we didn't always have horses before that we had dogs and dogs are what carried everything for the tribe. And so, um, they were the dogs, you know, that your dogs, do you guys have dogs? Yeah. Yes. So your dogs, do you know what wild animal they're all related to? Wolves. Yep. So no matter what size they are, like a chihuahua or a husky, yeah. they're all related to wolves. And so our tribes, when um, back you know before horses, you know domesticated wolves, and um, kept them, and they helped the people. So dogs are really sacred to us. So we have dogs um, on our reservation. We don't um, people don't really put dogs on leashes or anything because they're seen as equals to humans since they help the tribe. So a lot of times dogs just kind of run in packs. From like house to house and like that's pretty cool yeah, yeah. sometimes it's dangerous because some of the dogs get like kind of rough um but then a lot of them don't so it yeah. just depends um and then so I, like i said we have dogs and then horses when the horse was introduced to um, native tribes became a really important part of who we are so yeah my family rides horses and trains horses um another thing in terms of like so we go to powwow every year we actually take kids from literature den so you'll get to see Pow Wow this year, Thomas, oh, okay. um, when you're in Montana. And Pow Wow is a, um, a celebration of dance and music, and it's also a competition. So it's all like, so when I was your age, um, I learned how to jingle dress dance and fancy dance, but I didn't end up going, like, further with it, yeah. so I didn't end yeah. up ever competing. Um, another thing is, like, my daughter, when she was born, um, my grandma made her a dream catcher. To, oh, yeah. to um, filter out the spirits that are trying to give you nightmares. Yeah. It keeps them away. Yeah. And then also she also received her little tiny pair of moccasins. So she kind of is getting <clears throat> to practice that culture as well. I, I think that's what you meant, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Oh, also we hunt. Oh, okay. So um, my whole life, I didn't have any... Um, like store-bought meat or anything until I really until I went to college. My family ate almost all wild game, so we eat elk and um, elk and bison and deer meat, so which is called venison.
Um, do you see your family often? Um, I guess I wish I saw them more because I live in Hawaii, so it's pretty far. Yeah. Um, but I see them every Christmas. We go home to Montana, and then I see them every summer. I spend the summer in Montana. Yeah, on the Montana trip. Yeah. Yep. Um, what age did you leave the reservation? Um, when I was 18. Okay. And I went away to college. And I took the, so on the reservation in the middle of nowhere, the train stops, just like, just like out in the field. And so I got on the train and rode the train three days to the East Coast where I went to college. Wow. <laughs> um, did you play any games or do other more cultural celebrations? So what games did you attend or like games did you play? Yeah. Um, so I think the main one would be stick games and it's like actually kind of like a type of gambling um, where they hide bones in their hands and um, you kind of sit in rows and there's a lot of drumming and singing and it's um, kind of like some people think that the elders that are really good at it like they're actually using magic because what it is is they pass the bones like this so if you can't really see they're passing them and you have to pick which hand Whose hand they're in? Oh, we played that when we went to the um, museum on a field trip one time. Oh, cool. oh yeah, we did that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So that's a really that's a game that we used to play. Um, most of the stuff that we did though was like just, and I don't know if it's really considered cultural in terms of like um, what you guys might be thinking, but um, on the reservations on the mainland, the most important game that you can play and be good at is basketball. And, like, if you're a good basketball player, it's like you're a god. Like, my brother is really good at basketball. And, like, after a game, like, elders would come shake his hand and, like, pass him money in their hand because you're bringing honor to the tribe. So, basket, like, football isn't a big sport where I'm from, but basketball. And then also running. Like, if you're, real, like, so running cross country. Yeah. So, I ran cross country. Um, and so did my sister. We were both runners. Um, but yeah, so I think it's, you want to be careful because like native people are just like you guys, right? Yeah, like they, yeah. you guys know that like people play video games and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, so it's not like everyone is like walking around in buckskin outfits and riding a horse to school. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, I would say basketball is like the most important sport. Do you see yourself passing the culture down to your daughter and doing all the different celebrations. Definitely. Yeah, my, I'm really lucky because um, I have a lot of aunties and uncles who are going to, and because a lot of my friends are also Native, so but they're from different tribes, like they're Navajo, which the Navajo people call themselves Diné, um, or they're like Choctaw or Chickasaw or Kiowa. Mm -hmm. These are different tribes around the country. Um, so they also want to pass on to my daughter and their own children these values. So... I think even though we live in Hawaii, we're still that she'll still be connected um, to her native culture as well. Yeah. And and I think like one thing to keep in mind is that it's really about values, and the most important value is valuing the earth. And so like you know you guys both do wild kids, and that's yeah. really a big reason why wild kids exist. Because in my culture, the most important thing is is taking care of the earth because yeah. that's the gift you give your children is as you give them the earth, like you keep it safe, you know. Um, did you ever interact with people who were not on the reservation or mm -hmm. people outside of the reservation? Like at a young age? Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of racism. So I know that's not a focus for you guys. But um, so my mom is, is white. She's um, German and Danish and um, English. And so we have a mixed family, right? So some of us are light-skinned and some of us are dark-skinned. Um. And so sometimes we would get harassed by the police um, if we were off the reservation. Um, like if my stepdad was driving the car, we would get pulled over and searched. Um, or sometimes like randomly, like when I, wor I worked at, off the reservation at the mall and my stepdad came to bring me lunch and got like taken out by the security guard because the assumption is that because he's a big, because he was, he's that, he passed away, but um, he's six foot four and has long black braids and is really dark. And so, unfortunately, um, sometimes that causes people to think that he must be, like, stealing something or must be hmm. doing drugs or that kind of thing. So we, we did experience um, racism. And sometimes when our basketball team would go and play 
teams off the reservation, we would have to have a police escort because of fights after the game. Um, at the same time, um, we also experienced racism the other direction, like because our skin was light, some Indians that were darker would would be racist towards my sister and I because we're both lighter skinned. More me, I'm the lightest skin in the family because my sister at least has brown eyes and I have green eyes. Oh, so yeah. definitely, you know, like get called like half breed or like yeah. Napiaki, which is just like white woman. Um, but you learn that people that are racist are really just um, insecure. Yeah, because that kind of leaded onto our next question, which is, do you ever witness discrimination because of cultural differences? And if so, describe what happened. So, yeah. How far back does your ancestry go? Like yeah. back into. It. Um. What do you mean by that? Like, 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 do, does it always stay Native American, or does it go to somewhere else? Or? Oh, I yeah. see. So yeah, that's like. Just like I'm sure you guys, like, we're mixed. So, like I said, like, my mom is German, Danish, a little bit English. My dad is Lakota and Irish. And so we have all those. And all of those, anywhere on the planet that you go, at one time people were tribal. At yeah. one time they lived in tribes. And so, like, we're all, we're all native, right? Yeah. Like, um, we're all indigenous at some point. Um, like, in Germany, if you think of Europe, the Germanic tribes were the very last people to stop living, like, like in a tribal oh, really? setting. They're the last. And so they have a really um, strong connection to Native American people. So in Germany, they, like, like go on vacations on the weekend and stay in teepees and stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's something, too, that you'll see, Thomas, when you come okay. to Montana. We, we have teepees, and you guys will probably sleep in a teepee while you're there. Um, my Uncle Charlie Mann is an elder on the on the reservation, so he's like one of the leaders. He has long, gray, silver braids, oh, yeah. and we stay in his teepee. Do cultures ever like get in fights or arguments? Yeah, totally. Do you mean like in between tribes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, the if you go over the mountains, so the Blackfeet people live on one side of Glacier National Park, and that was like their hunting ground. Glacier Park was they considered it to be theirs. On the other yeah. side of the mountains is a tribe called the Kootenai tribe. And the historically, the Blackfeet kind of were bullies, and they went over and they would like steal all the horses from the Kootenai, and like steal the women and like you know kill them. They were yeah. like warring, right? Um, today, there's still prejudice between those two tribes. So um, there are these two different reservations. It's kind of hard to picture, but so there's the Blackfeet reservation, and then yeah. over the mountains, there's the Kootenai reservation. It's called the Flathead Reservation. Um, I went to school on the Flathead Reservation, even though my family lived over here, because the school here was better. And here it was really pretty bad, like a lot of knife better fights education. and oh, yeah. better education. And so, um, but my stepdad got into trouble with some Kootenays over here on this reservation, and so he was banned from this reservation for 10 years. He couldn't even set foot on it. So when I graduated from high school, they had to sneak onto the reservation to see my graduation because they were banned. So there's a lot of fighting. There's also, more than anything, there's fighting between families. So my family's last name is Cross Guns. Yeah. Um, so I, my mom and my sister have the last name Cross Guns. And um, I kept my dad's last name, which is Ho, which is English. Yeah. Um, but his family's last name is Brave, like the Lakota side. So okay. my grandma's name is Annie Brave. But um, so the Cross Guns, their, their family kind of fights with this other family called the Bird Rattlers. So that's something that's interesting is that the last names on the reservation are like skunk cap, bird rattlers, um, rides in the dark. Um, actually, one of the last names is everybody talks about. It's actually the <laughs> last name. And we just call them talks about, but it's everybody talks about. Um, there's running crane, kicking woman, um, young running crane. So those are the last names that people have. There's not last names like Chang yeah. or Gray. Those aren't names that we have on the reservation, but the the families fight each other. Yeah, like they still like we lived in this um, house way out on the prairie. It was like a trailer. It's kind of dumpy out in the middle of nowhere because I grew up really poor. And um, when we moved out there, the bird rattlers had put a bunch of cows and um, locked them inside of the trailer, and they all died in there. So we had to like take dead cows out and like scoop up like tons and tons of cow poop before we could move in. And the smell never left. It always smelled really bad. If you could picture it, it's way out in the middle of nowhere. But that's because they were war like fighting families. Yeah. All kinds of stuff like that happens. 
Did anyone you know ever, like, get into a serious fight and, like, mm -hmm. death occurred? Um, no. Yeah, definitely. Yep. So, unfortunately, my cousin, um, Aaron Northpigan was his name, he got in with some with a bad crowd, and unfortunately he was actually killed. He was stabbed. So there, it, there is um, some tough stuff that happens, but I would say that that's not so much cultural as that has to do with poverty. Yeah, yeah. People are really, like, we have, like, in the wintertime, it's 90% of the people that live on our reservation don't have work. Oh, wow, really? Yeah. And so people are really poor, and um, which is why we hunted, right? That's how we got yeah. our food. Yeah. So people are really poor, and also, like, they're kind of depressed because their culture got taken away. Yeah. And so, like, my grandma, she had scars on her eyes where she was, when she was little, she was taken away to boarding school. Like, because they came and rounded up all the Indian kids. They took her to boarding school. And if you talked your own, spoke your own language, you got beaten by the nuns. Or um, if you, they weren't, you weren't allowed to wear your own clothes. You had to wear, like, what would be considered, like, white person clothes. Yeah. Um, and they lined the kids up and they, they scraped their eyes for, like, they thought if they had cataracts, they kind of treated them like animals. So those kids, a lot of them died of, like, broken hearts. There's a, there's a graveyard, actually, at one of the boarding schools, and it's all, like, kids ages 8 to 12 that just died because they were so sad being away from their family and their culture and their tradition. And so those people came back, right? Like, my grandma, she came back from the boarding school, and they were kind of broken. And then they raised their kids. Yeah. And there was a lot of abuse and a lot of alcoholism, and it kind of got passed down generation to generation. So now you have a whole community that really struggles with depression and alcoholism, drug abuse. And so a lot of that violence that you, that it does exist, especially on our reservation, it, it has to do with like passing down this deep sadness of losing your way of life. Yeah. Um, did anyone that was like not dragging their own weight or had special needs? Did you guys treat them specially, or did you just um, treat them like everybody else? Do you mean like they learn differently, or yeah. do you? Oh yeah, that's oh, yeah. yeah. If they were treated differently, so. yeah. Um, my little sister, so she's my stepsister. She has a different mom and dad than me, but um, she had fetal alcohol syndrome, which means that when she was when her mom was pregnant, her mom drank alcohol, oh, okay. and so it made her. Um, she had holes in her brain. Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> And she doesn't. She didn't get treated differently. She just oh, yeah. got extra um, help at school and yeah, at yeah. home. I I've, would say. Yeah. Um, another thing is that traditionally in our culture, if somebody, you know, like let's say someone like learns differently, or um, maybe like they're very effeminate, like a man who's like very yeah. effeminate, um, or like would be now considered gay yeah. in our culture that was like um powerful like it was called oh. bordash and it meant that you had two spirits inside you at the same time a male and a female so you had extra power like extra so they were treated like medicine which means like like kind of like magic i guess oh, that's and so that's cool. something that in my in my family that is also like <clears throat> a big deal like there, there are medicine men and medicine women on our reservation that still practice like old traditions of when we say medicine, I think that in what you, I think you guys would best relate it to like what is considered magic. I don't know what else to call it. We call it medicine. That's interesting. Like they send yeah. a wolf to come see you. Like like one time my mom was driving late at night and in the middle of the road, a white wolf came into the middle of the road and like wouldn't move. And then later, um, one of the medicine men had said that he had sent the wolf to check that she was safe. Oh. That's cool. That's that's cool. Yeah. So it's like your way of magic. I guess so. I yeah. yeah. I don't know how else to like say the yeah, like yeah. what you would consider it. Yeah. That's what people believe on the reservation. So if someone passes, do you guys like honor them? Mm -hmm. So when my stepdad died, um, most of the people in my family cut their hair. That's something that we do. Like my brothers cut their braids off, um, and it for four days and four nights you like everyone gets together and wails like like cries loudly together and so we did that and like people drum and sing for four days and four nights so no one stops drumming no one stops singing you just have to like if you have to 
step out to get water, then someone else has to take the drum and keep going. So you can't stop it. Um, and then on the end of the fourth day, the kids, so me and my brothers and sisters, um, we ride horseback with his body up to um, a place in the mountains where the rest of our family is buried. Oh, cool. So you have like an honorable place. Yeah, like a there. burial place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know how there's like violence almost between like the different families and stuff. Is there also like, so they could, at one point they could be at each other's throats, but is there also like families come together and like mm -hmm. a peace time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a peace, a peace totally. time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. There's, there is, and there's lots of families that don't fight, right? It, but yeah. it, you have to think of it like when people don't have anything and they have, like, a low self-esteem and, like, maybe there's abuse in their family. Yeah. It kind of manifests in, like, there's a lot of fighting at the yeah. school. Like, your guys' kids' age, like, bringing knives to school and, you know. Um, but there's also lots of people that honor and help each other and, and everyone... Like, everyone takes care of kids. Like, it doesn't matter if they're your parent or not. Everyone takes care of each other. So that's something that's really strong belief in Native culture is that everyone takes care of each other. Like, if even if you're not my kid, it's my responsibility to make no, sure you're safe. No, I'm behind, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Hmm. And then another thing, would would there ever be a peace time between the two cultures? When yeah. they ever got together, played games, had celebrations? Yep, so that's what powwow is. Is that's a time through dance and song that people kind of form alliances and like there's no fighting. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, that's so interesting. basically, like everyone acts as friends during that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yep. Cool. You guys have any more questions? No. Well, we actually. Well, no. That was a lot of information. Yeah, that was a lot of information. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, if you guys have any more questions, you Kay. can email them to me and I'll email okay. you. Back. Okay. Does that sound good? Okay, yeah, that okay. sounds great. All right, guys, okay. I'm excited for your for final project. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, see thank ya. you. Okay, see ya. Bye.